What is poppin'? I'm the slap and I'm but a lowly slap and riding these DeFi waves. And this is This Week in Klima Dow, where I give you all the Klima Dow news that is fit to go ape wild over. And it is the last week of December, the last week of the year. That was 2021. And while most sane individuals were relaxing and enjoying the holidays, well, this is crypto, baby. And more importantly, this is Klima Dow, baby. And we've got a mission, baby. Um, and, and it was a busy week, as always. There was things going on, and I'm going to keep you abreast of them. So the first is this Korean policy call. Korean is the head of the policy department of Klimadao, and Korean laid out some really cool things about where Klimadao is headed, I would say. And one of the things I want to draw to your attention, by the way, these recordings are kept in the resources and recording section of the Klimadao Discord, which I will link in the video in the description of this video below. But here's the thing I want to draw to your attention to kind of tease you about all the cool things in that video. Korean had mentioned that one of the things that um, the DAO should focus on is shifting from this idea of being a black hole, that the idea that the protocol just sucks up BCT and carbon. Hey, and make no mistake, we are sucking up that carbon. And, and I will even tell you how much of that carbon we are sucking up at the end of this video. But we should shift away from just this idea of all we're doing is sucking up carbon to this idea that we are an economic machine. And, and Korean had mentioned that this is an important thing to do and we are actively pursuing this. And Korean said that one way that we could do this is to become the reserve currency of carbon markets and carbon assets. So right now you can get to BCT through Klima. But what if you can get to multiple or all of the on-chain carbon assets through Klima? Then Klima would have this value as the reserve currency, this conduit, this way to get from one to the other. That solution currently does not exist on-chain or off-chain. That would give Klima doubt a significant amount of value. So listen to that AMA to get some more gems from the big brain, Korean. So I, I had mentioned other assets, uh, which brings me to the next community call, Ask Me Anything, which was, be, which was with the CEO and CTO of Moss. Moss is an entity that issues these carbon credit called, carbon credits called, carbon credits called, carbon credits called MCO2s. And in this community call, and this asked me anything, Korean and Archimedes and the community had a chance to, to ask questions of these, of these, uh, of these people from Moss, the CEO and CTO, and highly encourage you to listen to the whole thing again. Very informative. I will just draw your attention to two questions that came up in the request for comment phase of this proposal. And I've seen in, in chat a lot as I've been modding. The first is this issue of double spending. Well, how do we know that these credits are legit? So there has been an audit done to verify that uh, that the credits from off-chain have been brought on-chain and have been accounted for properly. And the team mentioned this, mentioned that they have made a concerted effort to make sure that, that carbon credits are not double counted. Just by bringing them on-chain where there's a public ledger, that is one's defense against double counting. And they had mentioned that they were even working on these cross-registry verifications. So cross-referencing all of the carbon registries to make sure that these carbon credits we're not living on each or on multiple registries and not have a chance to be double claimed. That was cool. And the next one was their attempts to decentralize because we're all about decentralization, right? We are a DAO, or I should say, you are the DAO, the, the royal we. Um, decentralized autonomous organization. They they are not. They are a traditional entity, and the community is very interested in this. Like, well, well, what's your attempts at decentralizing? And they brought forth these three things. The first was that just by getting involved with somebody like Klima, that they are making attempts at decentralizing by proxy. The second thing was that while you can only purchase the MCO2s on Coinbase or on uh, Gemini, which are centralized exchanges, they intend or they are thinking about at least putting a MCO2 USDC liquidity pair on an automatic market maker, a decentralized exchange like SushiSwap. And the final leg would be that they are open to other issuers, somebody like Toucan being able to issue MCO2s. So they, they do not have a monopoly on the issuance of MCO2s. But again, listen to it all. You can make your opinion. Love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. Are you for MCO2s? Do you like Moss? What's the deal? Let it, let it rip. You guys are the doubt. So I have on screen KIP6, uh, a proposal. This is an informal proposal. KIP6 would or, or does propose that MCO2s be allowed as the next carbon backing or the carbon asset in our treasury to back Klima. At the time of shooting this video, there weren't very many votes cast, 361 um, in favor, very few, uh, four votes not in favor. Remember, I'll say it again, you are the DAO, get your voice heard. Do not wait for other people to make the DAO's decisions for you. KIP7, I will also link this, very similar, along the same lines. 
proposes a Klima MCO2 liquidity pair bond to the protocol at the time of shooting this video. We have 320 votes for, for 10 votes not for. There's plenty of time, plenty of you out there to change the vote or continue the vote, however you want to see it. So a lot of policy things going on. So what better way to end the week than with the release of a Planet of the Climates podcast with policy co-lead Kujo. Kujo um, gets into the podcast. He starts explaining his journey into Klimadao, which is fascinating. I think everybody's journey into Klimadao is fascinating. He gets into some of the more technical aspects of his job and of, BC, of controlling things like BCV. If you're into the technical aspects of policy, definitely listen to this podcast. And even if you're not, there's something for you, I'm sure, because then we get into the juicy stuff of, oh, I love this. He was asked point blank, and this just shows the transparency and it shows the conviction and it shows the confidence of the Dow and the people involved. Point blank, why is the price um, lower than some people would want? And he gives a beautiful answer. And I'm not going to spoil all of it. I'm going to have you guys go listen to it. But um, I'll give you a hint. It has to do with fundamentals. And he was also asked for his prediction of Klima in 2033. Again, I will not spoil that. Something that you guys will have to click and listen to. Get in the habit of watching Planet of the Climates. Beautiful stuff. All right, so I teased fundamentals in the beginning of this video. I, I teased uh, how much carbon we're sucking up. I'm, I'm mentioning fundamentals now, so let's get it. Protocol is 10 weeks old. I want to do an end of the year kind of retrospective on things that were accomplished, not even in a full quarter, not even in a full three months. These are the fundamentals that Cujo referenced. These are some of the fundamentals that um, I will personally say I think are important and things that we can compare every year. It'll be kind of fun to see. All right, so climates, the number of clima, clima holders, the number of wallets that are that hold uh that I say Klima, Klima tokens, 61,000, over 61,000, 61,317 at the time of shooting of this video. I didn't even have a chance to tell you guys when we broke 60,000. It wasn't even that long ago. And we have shot right through 60,000, right through 61,000 on our way to 62,000 and above. Every time you onboard new people, every time that new wallets get open and hold Klima tokens, that is exposure, that shows interest, and it shows that the protocol is growing. Beautiful thing. The treasury, this is where the sauce is as far as I'm concerned. I love talking about the treasury. The treasury is the assets that currently are being held in the protocol. This is not my opinion. This is objective stuff. It's over 7 million naked BCT. BCT in reserve, 7.473 um, million as a matter of fact. Almost 14 million total carbon tons being held in the treasury and almost $150 million USD total value of the assets in the treasury it's a beautiful thing here's a visualization it looks like a ski slope this is our this is our carbon in the treasury look at it go or our rfv rather um carbon in the treasury it looks like a ski slope what's it shooting you into 2022 let's go baby um i'll also draw your attention to the rfv which is 5.90 i will leave a, a video card above my finger if you want to get an education on what rfv is this is a good thing when you when it goes up and if you look at this visual re representation we have been going up Particularly around December 12th, there has been a, a big bump towards the towards the increase in, in BCT and the RFE. Beautiful thing. Last but not least is liquidity. Liquidity fees, almost $10 million in liquidity fees, meaning every time that BCT or Klima is bought or sold through SushiSwap, we are collecting, the protocol is collecting these fees, almost $10 million. So think about if we do become the, the reserve currency, we have all of these pairs and people are trading between them constantly, that's LP fees, let's go. And last but not least is the total liquidity owned, a strong, a respectable, a respectable uh, 103 million USD. So keep this on file. We will compare this from time to time, but certainly from year to year. January should be a very active month when people are done with the holidays. They're getting back into work mode. I'm very excited to see what lays ahead. We will keep you abreast. Remember, ape responsibly. Enjoy the new year. Peace, dudes.